What's going on everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic and we are here in NCAA Basketball 10 where we have a double header planned for you guys today because it is rivalry week and in rivalry week we are taking on the best team in the conference going back to back first hosting Butler on our home court and then going out to Indiana to play Butler on the road once again and it's gonna be huge implications for the conference but right now is undefeated and are currently 19 and 1 with the number 17 ranking in the nation and then for us we're not doing so bad ourselves at conference play we're 5 and 4 and but we are currently only 8 and 12 so I would love to get one of two games against Butler that would be huge for us and I'm so excited to get into this game. If you are excited too, make sure you smash that like button. Hit me up down in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe as well for more college gaming content. Let's go ahead and jump into these games though because I'm excited for it. Let's go. Alright, enough talking. And now it is time to play the number 17 team in the country in the Butler Bulldogs. And we're going to start things off strong with a lay-in from Custom Recruit. Lewis Eugene as on the other hand we nearly pick off the pass but it deflects their way but we get a block nonetheless and now Marcus Lewis is going to run the floor get the crotchet he takes a free and that free is good we take a nice early lead as our offense is in rhythm early on and we're trying to come out firing on all cylinders and there's another free from crotchet it's good again we're up 10 to 2 putting these guys punching these guys in the face with everything we have as Greg Albert hits that will fade away in the face of the center but Bower you know they're ranked number 17 for a reason and now they're trying to come back slowly but surely as they draw this foul here on Marcus Lewis he's able to go and get both free throws in and now it's only a four point gain and now it's cut down to two. Butler is making a run of their own here. As now Wright State is looking to move the ball around. Trying to get some more points on the board. And Greg Albert is going to get to the free throw line. LeVar Rucker. I'm pretty sure that's Gordon Hayward in real life. Because this is the original rosters from when the game was first released. Speaking of releases, there's Darren Joyce with a nice three. And then... Almost got the pass to Darren Joyce again, but it's nearly picked off and nearly a turnover. But Crotchet's going to respond for us. But yeah, anyways, these are the original rosters. So we're dealing with Gordon Hayward, but we're Bulldogs. And that means Brad Stevens is also on the sideline as well. And just to note, as they miss a really easy layup, this is really uncharacteristic for Butler. They don't usually miss those kinds of shots. As now we actually get a foul on the other side of the floor and now it's a 13 point lead and it's about to go up to 15 as Patterson makes that mid-ranger danger it's a 15 point game and now our guys are getting dunked on it's been a really entertaining game so far I thought we were gonna get our butts kicked but right but surprisingly that has not been the case as a matter of fact we're the ones doing the butt kick and it's nice to not being on the receiving end of that every once in a while as Patterson he's gonna drive in the paint he's gonna get the layup to go just everything falling for the Raiders as Copeland makes a nice cut to the hoop it's a 14 point lead man things have been crazy so far as we nearly pick off the pass but somehow gets through Greg Albert so it's just a 12 point game now and we nearly pick up the pass there but it's an easy lay-in and said, you know, but sometimes we like the game on defense, and that means we sometimes get some turnovers, and sometimes that leads to easy buckets on the other end, as now they cut this down to a 10-point game. But with 30 seconds left, we get the turnover that I've been talking about. Greg Alberts running the floor. He's gonna take it himself and nearly gets it to go, but instead it's going to be two free throws and that's actually going to be the end of the half and we're up by 15. Hopefully we can keep this up in the second half. 
Moving into second half action though, and we're going to start things off right with a deep corner three from Nathan Crotchet. He has just been on fire today, fueling this big lead that we have, but we do turn the ball over on this possession, and they go the other way. Despite the defense that we were able to come up with, still was able to get that shot to go. And then point guard is just dancing around. He's able to get past multiple defenders. Low-key breaks our ankles, actually, you know, for... 2010 standards of course and now uh, Butler's trying to make a run but it's going to be thwarted by Greg Albert he's going to pass it to Lewis Eugene and he gets the layup to go look at the customer crew balling out and now our guys are starting to get turnovers we're being active on defensive end there's Corey Hebert able to go the other way with it it's now a 19 point game here and then it's going about to be a 21 point game with Nathan Crotchet as now we're looking at a 21 point game as uh, they actually get that little post shot to go but bowler has been really struggling today usually they shoot 52 percent from the field today they're shooting 40 so we're doing a great job on defense as they're able to get that transition free to go we can't let them have opportunities like that though at the very least as he's able to carve his way through the lane he gets the offensive board and he gets that shot to go but we're trying to get a little bit of a run in. But can we get a response? Can we stop it? And we're sure going to do that today. It has been that kind of game. Our boys are just on fire. Just been balling out as they missed the layup there. We're going to run on the other side. There's Copeland pulling up for free. It's deep. It's still good, though. It doesn't matter because we're just hitting everything today. As we get another turnover, we're going to pass it over to Marcus Lewis. He's going to dunk it in with authority and it's a 24 point game and no one is has been expecting that as Eugene hits that little mid-ranger danger and now we're looking at a 26 point lead as they get that bucket to go it's down to 24 but there's really nothing else to say we dominate in this first game let's go all right, so checking out the stats for this first monumental upset in the season, Nate Crotchet went off, bruh. He had 28 points, 10 for 18 from the field, 6 for 12 from the three-point line. The dude was balling out, and I'm so happy that he at least is coming back next season. We also had great efforts from Greg Grant Albert, Lewis Eugene, Marcus Lewis with double digits, and, you know, we just had boys all around. You know, chipping some nice buckets for us. It was one heck of a game. And I know it's going to be a lot harder moving forward. But I'm excited to get into the second part of this double header. Let's go get it. Alright, so for game number two, we are now going to Indianapolis to play them on their court. They're still ranked number 17 in the country. Because the polls don't come out until I believe shortly after this game. And there's, you know, star player watch. You know, first time that we show up on CBS this season. So that's a thing. And just going through our starting lineups, you know, our usual starters that are out there, you know, compared to uh, Butler's starting lineup as, you know, we got to look at LeVar Rucker. He's a, he's a sophomore, and that's their best player on their team. But now we're tipping off, and now Butler wins the tip this time around, and we are ready to get things underway. First time on national TV as we're playing on CBS, and their first possession, they come up empty. And we're going to try to implement our up-tempo early and often as we're going to try to uh, cut to the basket and unfortunately it's turned over. So we got ourselves a, a defensive struggle early on. See if we can get some buckets to happen here. Heber dancing around. He's going to pull up doing a little Kobe action. Rest in peace, Kobe. Able to get that shot to go for the first buckets, however... On the other end, here comes Greg Albert. He's looking to make it 6-2, and he gets it done. We have a four-point lead. On the other end, here comes Butler, though. Ten seconds left on the shot clock, and they get that one to go. It's now tied again as Butler, you know, playing a lot better already. It's going to be more of a challenge, I can tell, as they're dominating on the board as Greg Albert gets posterized by Terrell Dunn. And now they're looking to take the lead here. And they're going to do just that as they get the foul called on Nathan Crotchet. It's now a two-point lead here. As now they are trying to press us deep, but it's not going to work. Oh, no. It didn't work at first, but we 
Rushed our uh, second pass a little too much, and now they're driving on the other side of the floor. Nobody covers the point guard on the other end. It's a 10 to 2 run here since we had that big lead early on in the game. However, Nathan Crotchet, he's going to cut into it, into that run, stops the run, and we have a one point lead there. And then here comes Darren Joyce. He somehow gets the ball back to Marcus Lewis. He gets the little mid ranger danger to go. It's a two point game, but they look to tie it here as Dunn misses that first shot, but we are just getting dominated on the offensive glass. Just struggling so far, but our defense is still keeping us in the game, even though the rebound is 100% there. And then there's Crotchet finishing it up, finishing up that transition game as we were looking to dominate as Hebert, he picks up another steal with that scoop and score. It's a two-point game here as now Wright State is looking to make this lead even wider as Crotchet hits another mid-range or danger. So about 4.30 left. These next few minutes are going to be huge. And our defense is showing up and turning out as Devin Copeland is able to get into the lane. Nice pass from Chris Hebert. And now it's a four-point game for the Raiders as Eugene Picks up another steal, and he slams it with authority. Oh, my word. What a slam dunk. However, Butler does come by. They kick up the offensive board, but Gordon Hayward, who would eventually be a star for the Jazz and the Celtics, he gets blocked, and Devin Copeland on the other end picks up the three-point attempt, but then there's Gordon Hayward picking up that bucket. So now six points left. We gotta finish strong here, and we might do just that as Copeland. He's going the other way. One on three. Done a little smarter. Just gonna allow the um, defense get set. My capture card freezes for a second, but doesn't phase Copeland as he hits the three to end this half. And so now we're up by nine. Going into halftime. Now can we hold on? Cause they will come back at some point it's just a matter of when as right now crotchet he's gonna shoot from the corner he misses that one badly marcus lewis is gonna pick up the rebound though lewis eugene misses that but marcus lewis again is there to pick up the rebound this time he just finishes it himself he got two boards you do what you want big big fella so he's able to finish there and so is butler finishing on the other end cutting it to 11 as now but we're just trying to mount a comeback. They get a nice mid-ranger to nearly fall, but it's they got the offensive rebound. It's been a problem for us throughout the game, you know, even though we've been playing really well, I should say, is that we've been dominated on the rebound more than we anticipated, and that could kill us later on if we're not careful. Now, since 11-point game, they're going to almost get that one to go, but it's just short. And now Crotch is going to run with it on the other end. He's going to pull up for free, and it's good. 14-point game for the Raiders. And now we have an opportunity to put the dagger in them. And that might be it as we're up by 16 again. And keep in mind, I didn't change the difficulty since I changed it in the middle of the season up to all-conference. We were playing on varsity. But it's reminding me of that to a degree. But Butler is going to try everything they can. They're using their size to try to get back into this game. We're not the biggest team. And it's currently showing that as we're just struggling with rebounding in this half. But Darren Joyce, though, has the range. Reminded me a little bit of Jimmer back in college. Hits that deep free right there. But then Butler on the other end, man. They just simply do not give up. There is a reason why they are number 17 in the country. If they were in a better conference, they would be ranked a lot higher, to be honest with you guys. But since they're in the Horizon League, which is typically a one-bid lead, then, you know, um, you know they get a little disrespected. But it's now a 10-point game. We're going to try to pass it up to Crotchet, but it's missed. And so we're able to come up the other way. And, oh, no, we can't to hang on here. We can't play not to lose. we got to play to win. But Butler is simply not giving up. They have the home crowd on their side. And they also got the momentum as it's now down to seven here. But then Butler gets fouled by Grant Albert. That's his fourth foul. 
It's now a five point game here. And then here they come. They nearly make it a one possession game. But now Nathan Crotchet, he's going to go the other way. And there's a deep three. The pull up three is good. Hopefully that keeps him at bay a little bit longer. But then once again, Gordon Hayward draws another foul. This time looks like it's Marcus Lewis. He gets both free throws. And now Corey Heaver, he tries to go for a layup. That's no good. And the frustration foul comes in. Definitely don't want to do that as that takes him automatically to the line. Where Derek Vasher makes both of those free throws. So now we're looking for a place to get a score. And Eugene gets it. Makes it a two possession game. Bower was now forced to take a time out. And so now we just got to get one more stop and this game will be over. And we get the stop we need and that is going to do it here. We beat Butler two times in a row. This time on their own court. So I don't know how we managed to pull it off. How we managed to hold on there. But we won both games against Butler. And boy, the crotchet was a big part of it, man. 19 points once again, 8 for 13, 3 for 8 from downtown. Also getting some help from Eugene, our custom recruit, Albert Copeland from the bench, leading the bench players with 11 points. You know, just playing some solid team basketball, man. And I could not be more proud of this team as we pull off two huge upsets in a row. So here's what the conference standings are looking like after that doubleheader. Butler is still in the lead by a solid, looks like two and a half games, despite losing two games in a row to yours truly on the road and at home. Then we got Detroit and Valpo in between us, and then we have Wright State. Yo, boy, we've climbed up to seven and four, and we are fourth in the conference. But we still got a lot of work to do, but I'm excited to get at it. That's all I'm going to do for today, though. Make sure you smash that like button. Hit me up down in the comments below as well. As subscribe to the channel if you are brand new, as I would truly appreciate it for more college sports gaming. This is John Jake Gaming on the mic, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.